have a special place where when we're there, we're in our element and we know it. Whether that place is the ocean, snow, the desert, the mountains, I do think that we all have a responsibility to live our everyday lives in harmony to that place, to truly honor it. sold on this whole throwaway society, this whole throwaway idea that the more civilized you are, the more convenient everything should be. You shouldn't have to do dishes if you can throw them away. You know, you shouldn't have to take care of something if you can throw it away and we'll make it cheap enough where you can buy another, but there is no away. There's no such place as a way. Hawaii is the most remote archipelago in the entire world. We sit almost smack dab in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And uh, being in the center of the ocean in the North Pacific also means that we're in the middle of the world's largest gyre. So we've got this current that just spins and anything that's put into it is on this journey forever until it washes up onto a beach gets eaten or sinks to the bottom of the ocean. People want to go out and visit the gyre, and we don't have to go all the way out into the middle of the ocean to do that. We could just go to these little mini gyres that are collecting all over our state and experience it firsthand right here. Almost every single piece of plastic that we have ever created is still here on Earth today. People are, I like to say that plastic breaks down into millions of pieces of its original self, when in reality, it breaks up. The ocean is contaminated by this, this smog of microplastics, where even in the cleanest of clean, the bluest of blues, it's there. trash gets here because of our overconsumption of plastic, but physically it gets here because of this super strong onshore wind blowing it ashore as it comes across our coast right here. The plastic pollution problem that we see in Hawaii is extremely global because what we're finding is coming from all across the North Pacific Rim and from countries far away from Hawaii. It's the things that we buy and use. We don't really realize that there are these externalities that come with our consumption. A lot of times we think of these sanctuaries as untouched by man. To go there and just see all of that plastic, it becomes very clear that no matter how protected any part of the ocean is, it's not untouched by man. When we bring about 500 people out to a beach like this, we'll usually pick up about 6,000 pounds of trash. And within a month, all this will be back. It's like trying to bail out the bathtub with the tap still running. You wouldn't go run and grab a bucket to bail out a bathtub that's overflowing. You'd simply go to the tap and turn it off. That's what we really need to be focusing on, seeing what is coming out of that tap. Where is that tap tied to? and stop it from ever entering the ocean in the first place. This isn't just a cleanup issue. It's not just how do we clean it, it's how do we prevent it? How do we stop it at the source? And the more that we studied it, the more I realized that there were choices that I could make in my everyday life that, that could help. So I started with bringing my own water bottle to places. And then I started bringing my own utensils with me. I started carrying reusable bags, bringing um, my glass Tupperware whenever I go to get takeout. Straws, I definitely got 
um, plastic straws out of my life. So the more that I started just incorporating these daily decisions and seeing what I could do to reduce you know, single-use plastic in my life, the more liberated I felt. I felt a sense of freedom from being so dependent on a system that's not really serving me or our planet. I am far from perfect when it comes to my own footprint, but I think just the ability to examine my decisions, it, it adds meaning to my life. The individual does have power, but it's a lot of individuals that have a lot of power. So it's about leading by example and really showing that you as an individual have recognized the problem and are taking proactive steps to solve it. Right now, completely eliminating single-use plastic, you know, entirely from our world isn't possible. But I can't help but believe that we can be the spark, you know, to start that fire or to start that wave that will slowly grow and will slowly rise into a real solution, a lasting change. And whether or not it happens in my lifetime, I can't quite say, but to say that I was a part of that wave, that's good enough for me. <laughs>